Hey guys, welcome back to all of my subscribers. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your support. If you are new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can come and hang out with me every time I upload a video. Let's move on into it. Now, you guys know how I do. I usually start with the couples who I don't want to say boring, but that there's not much going on with uh, their marriage at the moment. So I like to get those out of the way so we can get to the juicy stuff. All right, so I'm going to start with Jessica and Austin. So basically starting off, they're all starting off where they left off, and that was um, in the hotel room after the reception. They're getting out of their wedding clothes. Of course, they're being their usual goofy selves. Everything is funny, and, you know, they made a big hoopla about unbuttoning her dress and unzipping it. So all of that. Um, Jessica goes in the bathroom to change and she comes out in her PJs and I kid you not the first thing that came to my mind was the Brady Bunch I don't know why I don't know how I connected her PJs to the Brady Bunch but I did that's the first thing I thought about um, but anyway so nothing much they talked they went to bed that was it Next morning, you know, they had breakfast, they had small talk, laughing and giggling about the couch making a fart noise, and yeah. Um, later on, they met with the in-laws, and Jessica's twin, you know, her husband with um, Austin. And she basically was asking, you know, the usual questions, what's his intentions, things like that, and she asked, um, you know, is this just, an eight-week experiment for you or are you in this for the long haul and it's so crazy because whenever families ask that I'm like what do you think they're gonna say they're not gonna say yeah look I'm just here for eight weeks to get a check and I'm done they're gonna say yes I'm here for the long haul whether they are or they not um but at the same time I guess you don't really know what to ask you don't know these people so it's kind of it's not like They've been dating forever and you're having a sit down about marriage with them. But the one thing I wanted to point out that um, Jessica's brother-in-law said. <clears throat> now, I'm the type of person, people talk, they flow, the conversation's going. And there are key words or key statements that stick out to me. You know, I tend to analyze things <laughs> sometimes more than others. So it could be absolutely nothing, but it sticks out. And so you guys know how I do. I'll just put it out there. So the brother-in-law, you know, he was like, you know, if you need anything, you want to talk, whatever, blah, 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 we're here. And then he kind of jokingly says, um, well, you know, now maybe, you know, she'll call you instead of calling us. And the sister kind of jumps in and she's saying, well, you know, Jessica, you know, she just wants someone to hang out with. And so to me, I kind of took it as this conversation has been had before between Jessica's sister and her husband. Maybe he felt like she was calling too much or coming around too much because the way he said it and her immediate need for you know to respond to that kind of I don't know I, it just it just stood out to me um and 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 I can I can see that you know I can see not first of all when your siblings you know you tend to be very close come around whatever when you're twins I'm assuming that connection is even that much closer and then when you have one who doesn't have a significant other yeah she's going to have a little more free time she's going to want to be over there and I can imagine that causing friction in their marriage so that just stood out to me and that's the conclusion I came to um anyway so Jessica is with Austin's family and of course his mom is doing the majority of the talking she's asking jessica about her intentions she's letting it be known you know she was not feeling the process you know him being on this show and um during her confessional you know she's saying that she feels comfortable now and she's okay but to me her body language says otherwise she still doesn't seem to be 100 percent 
on board or comfortable with um, the situation and why I don't know I don't know if she's concerned how he's going to come off on the show or like I, I can't pinpoint why she's so still to this point reserved and, and, and has some some um, reservations about him being a part of this experiment but anyway so that's that with them um moving on to Derek and Katie in the room he's laughing with her you know while he's taking down her her hair from the wedding and she's asking him about um her about the conversation he had with her bridesmaid so she's asking and he just starts he just starts spilling it all she act like you know she's embarrassed and then she says um oh I thought they were going to tell you that I'm allergic to latex meaning condoms you know so again they laugh it off they go to bed the next morning now this is where I was a little confused because the next morning while they're in bed they let it be known that they did not consummate the marriage I could have sworn the last episode that at the very end they talked about consummating the marriage now you know however but watching this episode it seemed like you know they said that they got pretty close to it but they didn't do it so the only conclusion i came to was you know lifetime throwing in a clip you know how they do they'll throw in a clip and you don't know if it's something that happened that in that moment or is they're, they're throwing in a clip from something that's happening further down in the episodes so that's the only conclusion i came to um uh, with with that excuse me so anyway they're with the in-laws and um you know katie's with his family and nothing much you know his dad revealed that Derek can sometimes hold things in and that she would need to challenge him to express himself you know and katie says you know as a therapist that's what she does that's what she's used to it's just natural for her to do that and so it's not a problem so Derek is with um Katie's family and they're talking you know Katie's mom gets pretty emotional in her confessional she's saying you know she can't believe that you know her daughter's married and that um you know she's hoping that this is it her parents tend to make it a highlighted point about her past relationships you know naturally the couples or their families may say oh you know her past relationships she you know haven't had luck with love or whatever but it's like they really highlight her being heartbroken so i don't know if she's had like some major breakups where she's had uh you know a breakdown because of it i don't know but the fact that they keep bringing it up in terms of you know she loves hard and she definitely has had her heart broken you know pretty bad I'm just like okay what what's different between her a normal breakup and the breakups that she has okay because we've all been through it but anyway so her mom seemed pretty emotional she's just like I'm just really hoping that this is it and that he's Mr. Right and from talking to him she feels you know she feels that he is so Derek you know and um he asked could he speak to her dad outside alone they get out there and he's talking about you know although we're already married you know we didn't go the traditional route but it's important to me to have your blessing and her dad I like her dad so of course you know you could tell that it really meant a lot to him he said it meant a lot to him he did give his blessing and um you know saying that how he appreciated that they hugged that was it so then moving on to so taylor and, and brandon brandon gives taylor a necklace from tiffany's that says mrs reed you know which i thought was really cute um you know she gives him a hug thanks him 
And his response was, yeah, I really did put a lot of thought into that. Glad you liked it. And I don't know. That just kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little because Brandon strikes me as a narcissist, okay? And it's like, it's not even enough that you give him a pat on the back or give him kudos or thanks him. If It's almost like if he feels it's not enough, he's going to give himself a pat on the back and kudos you know i don't know if he was looking for her to say oh that was so thoughtful blah 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 or you know so i guess he figured like okay well i'm gonna say it i put a lot of thought into it i don't know he just I, that was just kind of off but moving along so he helps her out of her dress you know she goes into the bathroom they change they get in the bed she's in the bed playing with the roses throwing them up and you know they kiss goodnight. That's it. The next day, um, they're meeting with the in-laws. You know, everyone's doing the same thing. So Taylor um, is with Brandon's aunt and mother. This was one, I would say, out of all the interactions, all of the meetings, this was one of the most awkward if, if if I want to use that word um and I say that because when Taylor is asking them okay tell me more about Brandon now mind you she's asked this before and so we're gonna we're gonna connect what the officiant said at the ceremony you know the statement from his family um what the family told her at the reception and now here we are meeting with the family again and it's time for them to talk about what type of person Brandon is so she asked and there and I don't know this could have been editing but there was this long pause like they didn't know what to say so the mom is just sitting there the aunt comes in and she's like um instead of talking about Brandon and his personality and traits and ways or even giving you know a, a, a story or two about um, you know things that he's done she goes into what type of wife <laughs> um, Taylor should be so she's like well you know you need to be um, upfront and open with him because you know he's very upfront and speaks his mind and you know i think he's going to be what did she say i think i think he'll be a great father that was it so what type of how many kids do you want like that literally was her response so you know the mom is just sitting there she's not saying a word so all in all the only thing that brandon's family has revealed is that he's blunt up front speaks his mind and he'll be a great father so when the mom does eventually speaks instead of again talking about her son i mean just in terms of what type of son he is you know personality or or anything she asked did she asked taylor did he meet her expectations and it's almost like they're looking for her to tell them what type of person he is it's just it's just the dynamic there is really weird so anyway taylor you know she's like yeah you know he um and he seems real cool real nice he's very talkative and so then taylor asked um his mom you know what type of wife did you want for your son again instead of giving details based because here here's your son you know him i'm pretty sure you have talked about relationships i'm pretty sure you know you've been around and met ex-girlfriends and at some point you would think mom and son have had a conversation about the women he has dated and what he's looking for so when taylor asked well what type of wife did you want for him she, instead of her giving those things she says well you have all the qualities you're beautiful you're successful free-spirited blah 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 
again, nothing specific. Okay. I'm like, um, excuse me, mom. She didn't ask you to describe her. She knows who she is. She's asking prior to meeting her, what type of woman would you had hoped for, you know, your son to marry? So I'm like asking myself, like, who really raised him? Like, because these people act like they don't know Brandon at all. Or maybe they do know him and that is who he is. And that's all there is to it. But there's nothing. I didn't get any positive responses from them, if you will. Like, I just didn't. It seemed like everything was focused on his negative traits. And, and maybe some people don't think, you know, being blunt and being upfront and being, you know, um, and speak their mind. Maybe some people don't think that's a negative trait. But to me, when that's all you're saying, because being blunt sometimes can come off as being rude. Speaking your mind can sometimes come off as being rude. So, but anyway, um, moving on, Taylor, cousin, her aunt, and her mom meets with Brandon. <laughs> okay. So they meet and they ask him, you know, so how are you feeling? His response is, well, I'm just waking up. So I'm still trying to get myself together. What? I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm being too hard on Brandon or what, but that would not have been, I, I, I wouldn't have expected that. So his cousin, her cousin, um, you know, she was like, huh, I wish I could sleep this late. You know, like, they're not really asking you, I, I don't think, they, they're they not asking you, like, oh, hey, how, you know, what kind of a move are you in? They're, they're basically asking, like, out of all what's going on, how are you feeling? And this dude is like, because to me, it kind of came off like, look, I'm tired, I ain't really trying to do this, but it's required, so here I am. You know, so anyway, um... So Taylor's cousin just starts firing off the questions. <laughs> she, I, I like her, but, um, so she asked him his age, you know, he told her and she's like, okay, you're 33, not married. Like what's up with that? And Brandon goes into, oh, you know, us millennials, you know, we're weird like that, scared of commitment. So then she says, um, okay, well, you know that this is not just some woman you know, you just met that you're dating, like, this is your wife, and, you know, our concern is, we want to make sure that you are going to be good to Taylor, you know, so you need to reassure us of that, and, you know, he goes into, he loves being in a relationship, um, you know, he likes having a partner in crime, a best friend, and so then the natural, you know, question would be well how was your past relationships like how good were you to your other women you know the other women in your life and so he goes into um you know he's been good to all the women in his life as far as relationships um you know he was raised by three women so yeah he knows how to treat women now the three women that raised him, however, when you go to them and you ask them about Brandon, none of them, to my recollection, have said anything positive about him, has said anything about what type of grandson or son or nephew he is. Like, no positive attributes. So yeah how how are you because <laughs> because the women that raised you don't seem to have anything um positive to say in my opinion but anyway so the cousin you know she continues on um with the questions and you know he's kind of like talking in circles if you will but you know he's going into um you know his intentions are good and he's you know they don't really know each other. So once he does, you know, he's going to make sure that he makes her happy. And um, Taylor's mom comes in and she's asking, you know, about his past relationships. Like, well, why didn't they work? Because like in other words, 
you're a nice looking guy. You seem to have all the right answers. Why have you not, um, you know, met someone to the point where relationship and marriage, like tell us about your past relationships. And so he was saying how basically, you know, he was in school. He was so busy. He didn't really have time to devote to the relationships. And so that's why it failed. And, um, the mom was like, okay, well, I'm assuming you still going to be busy. Like in other words, you know, I'm assuming you still want to advance, like, you know, work, possibly school, you're still going to be busy. But now that, you know, you have a wife. So if you were that busy where you allow it to interfere in your relationship, how is it going to work out with having a wife now? And, you know, he goes into, yeah, I, you know, I can be sometimes busy, um, but in other words, that's not going to interfere with his marriage. You know, once he gets to know her and know her likes, dislikes, you know, all of those things, basically he will adjust to make sure that everything works out. So the mom was like, um, okay, you know, basically they can only go by what he says. And um, everyone, they all said, look. We just want her to be happy. The The cousin said something like, I hear you. I still don't get the warm and fuzzy feeling that, you know, this is this, is this, this you know, this is legit, but we're going to go along with it until you show us otherwise. But the bottom line, we all just want to make sure that you take care of Taylor. All right, so moving on to Zach and Mindy. Um, they get in the room, he, you know, Zach lays Mindy on the bed, they're kissing, and she's really getting into it. <laughs> she's like, oh, I can just, you know, kiss you forever. And as she's saying that, he, he backs up, and he's like, okay, let's get ready for bed, or let's put on our PJs. And I thought that was pretty telling, because he, it's like he's, somebody, one of you guys, posted in the comment section on my last review that Zach was a showman and you know I agree I'm like I think he he is a showman and it does seem like he shows up and shows out when the cameras are there and it's like how can I put it it's almost like robotic you know, okay, let me show her a little bit of affection. All right, now now I did that. Let's move on to the next thing. You know what I mean? If they, I, I don't know if that makes sense. But, um, yeah, so Mindy goes in there. She's removing her makeup, and um, she's doing her confessional, and she's talking about, you know, of course, how she's concerned um, about Zach seeing her fresh face. You know, is he still going to be attracted to her? And, um you know, he comes in there and he's talking to her and it's like, as they're talking, he, okay, he's looking at her, but it's not in a way of, you know, okay, you know how just the natural act of two people having a conversation and you're looking at them. He looks at her like he's sizing her up, like he's I don't know. I, almost like I don't know if he's looking at her teeth. It's almost like he's analyzing her face. He's just he's just he's not really into the conversation. He's checking her out. And not in a good way. So they go to bed. Next morning, he's like kissing her all over her face. <laughs> you know? So Zach is very it's now it's hard to read him because he's kissing her all over her face, you know, waking her up. And of course she's loving that. So nothing but, um, so later on he's, she's in bed and he's, you know, pouring coffee and he's like, he has on this towel and, you know, he's saying, um, you know, how do you like being, you know, me serving you and nothing but a towel? And, you know, of course she's loving that. But it's, to me, it came off like he was modeling or advertising, if you will. You know what I mean? Like he's doing that, but at the same time, it's like he's auditioning for the camera, if you will. So whoever, whoever posted that in the comment section, 
on my last review, you were absolutely right. Zach is a showman. Um, anyway, so Mindy meets with his family. It's time to meet the in-laws. So she's meeting with his family and um, she asks, what can she do to make him happy, make him comfortable? You know, basically like tell me something about him so that I know how to act with him. Um, so the sister, the sister almost... It's almost like she repeats word for word what Zach said, like during his introduction and his interview in the beginning of the um, season about he wants someone to challenge him mentally. He's looking for substance, you know, I'm outside of looks. But instead of looks, the sister was like outside of the gym. Like she's looking for someone to challenge him mentally more so than challenging him in the gym. Um, she said, you know, if you let him know that you're vulnerable, he'll do the same. He'll put his guards down and, you know, he'll be vulnerable. He'll know that it's okay to be vulnerable with you. So then his brother chimes in and basically he said, Zach is not an emotional person. So you're not going to get instant reaction from him. Um, he tries to control that. And then he said he's very stoic, which in my opinion is a red flag. Um, not saying you have to react to everything or, you know, you have to be a hothead exploding or crying a river, but someone who lacks the ability or to, to show feelings or emotions, regardless of what it is, it, to me, it's like, whether it's natural or you want to be so much in control of your emotions that you there's a lack of to me that's like a pressure cooker with a loose lid it really is because we're human and humans you know the natural reaction for humans or anyone is to show emotion i mean you have animals who show emotion so when you bottle that all in and you keep it under wraps at some point it's going to come out it's going to come out and it may not be a good thing um so mindy tells them you know that she's vulnerable that she's very emotional um, she's the emotional type and she hopes that that's not too much for him. Now we've all seen when, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when Mindy, you know, in the beginning of the season, when she talked about her parents, her sisters, um, and past relationships, and we saw how emotional she was. Um, so for her to, so we knew that. And so for her to, um, reveal that to his family and, of course, she was concerned, like, she hoped that that's not too much for him. They kind of glossed over that. They 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 didn't really address that or respond to that. They just said, you know, we like you and we approve, you know, <clears throat> we approve of you. And so then his mom was like, um, you know, if, if you need us, you know, to, to come in and handle him, just give us a call. Okay, so my whole thing with that, if he's a type, if he's stoic, if he's a type that regardless of what, he does not show emotion. And then on the other hand, he's married to someone who's very emotional, very vulnerable. That's a recipe for disaster. Because when you are a very emotional person who needs constant reassurance, who needs someone to... I don't want to say coddle, but listen to you and, you know, reassure you and calm you down and have empathy. When you are that type of person and you're with someone who doesn't even deal with his own feelings and own emotions and, and feel like, you know, I'm not giving a reaction because I don't feel it. It's, he, it's almost, he, he's not going to be able to get that to you, you know? Anyway, so Zach is with Mindy's sister and one of her bridesmaids. The bridesmaid immediately, she comes with, you know, 
what is your intention? What was your reason, your initial reason for applying for the show? And so he goes in, you never know, you know, where opportunities come from, you know, where they present themselves, um, whether it's for your career, for your marriage, etc. So then she follows up with, um, you know, asking him, where is he going with his career? You know, she knows that he's a trainer. And then she says, and it's almost like, I don't want to say a gotcha moment, but she says, um, and it appears, you know, I know you're a trainer, but it also appears to be that, you know, you're, you're a model too, that you do some type of modeling. Now, I don't remember that information being revealed about him. So I don't know if this is something, you know, they, they, they do a lot of editing. So at some point she could have been, maybe he told Mindy and Mindy told her, I don't know. Either that or she did some digging after the ceremony and um, found some stuff out about him. I don't know. But she, it, to me, her throwing that out there was kind of like, this is what I found out, you know, is and she's putting it out there like, what are your true intentions? Like, are you on here because you're trying to be this, this, this model and you feel like this is going to help you with, you know, exposure? So anyway... Um, she says all of that and then, um, you know, she mentioned, she's like, you being this trainer, you know, you're around beautiful women all the time. So, well, no, before she says that he responds and he's like, no, no, you know, absolutely not. My conscience wouldn't allow me, you know, to do something like that. Like basically his conscience wouldn't, wouldn't allow him to use something like marriage to advance his career so then that's when she was like okay you're lying to business being a trainer you're around beautiful women all the time so how can you reassure mindy as your wife that that's all there is to it you're just strictly training these women like how can you assure her um that she has nothing to worry about and he didn't really answer that he pretty much was like um you know He'll always reassure her where she stands regarding, you know, her position as his wife, that she has nothing to worry about um, as far as him and the women that he, that he trains. So in her confessional, the bridesmaid was saying how, you know, Zach appears to know what to say, but she can't tell if it's genuine. You know, and, and, and I will agree with that. Um, she was just saying, you know, she hoped that he can show them versus you know all of this talk because right now all he's just he's talking a good game but she's not really buying it um but and she let him know that <laughs> she was like look i'm still skeptical i'm still cautious because you know that's my girl and of course i want her to be happy i want what's best for her i don't know you so you know i'm letting you know right now there is some reservations there is some concern so on to Mike and Mika. All right, so they're in the bed. You know, they they get out of their, the clothes, and you know, it's it's funny because I liked Mike and Mika's interaction with each other. They seem real to really get along and really be you know flowing and vibing with each other so they're in the hotel room he's um helping her out well she's asked him to help her out of his dress and you know he's playing like oh no i'm not ready for this you know like they just seem to not skip a beat if you will so anyway um he helps her out you know her dress and um he's already in bed you know, she had changed her clothes. She came out with the robe on. She gets in the bed and um, she's like, yeah, you know, I envision this night. I envision us, you know, um, staying up all night talking. But now that I'm here in this bed and of course he's <laughs> he's looking like uh oh it's about to, it's about to go down. She's like, yeah, now that I'm here, you know, laying in this bed. Um, yeah, I just feel like I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> So, you know, and I knew what she was doing. But anyway, it was it was a it was a cute moment. But so the next morning, 
Mika is killing me. She's talking about, she's like, here I am just waking up and you got Mike over here ordering breakfast. Like, and he was dead serious. So they played a clip when they were talking after the ceremony and um, he asked her, he was like, so what is your favorite meal of the day? And I think she said dinner and he was like breakfast. So, so she it made her reflect on that like he wasn't but he wasn't lying he really is into breakfast so like i said i like their joking interactions you know um so the food comes and mika was saying how she doesn't really like to try new foods so mike gives her the side eye and he's like um okay yet you are okay with marrying a stranger though and i thought it was funny because i agree with him you know so after that, you know, they're hanging out with the in-laws. Mika is with Mike's family. And like I said in my last review, Mika seems really down to earth and like she can get along with anybody. Watching her with his family, you would have thought this was nothing new. They already knew each other. Like they were her family. She, she seemed really at ease. Um, his mom asked her, you know, what were her thoughts and um you know her intentions and Mika was saying she put all negative thoughts out of her mind because she wanted to fully be invested in this process and she wanted this to be forever you know so his sister speaks and I have to say I was a little confused because um something that she said so at the wedding at the reception if you guys remember um the mom and then you know the sister co-sign was saying how mike is not great at communicating okay he's he's he he shuts down he holds it all in and that mika will need to pull it out of him okay but at this meeting they're saying you know he's very strong will so he doesn't need a pushy wife. He doesn't, you know, need someone who's going to constantly push, push, push because he would not respond well to that. You know, he'll shut down. It would, it would not be good. So my question is, okay, if he doesn't want to talk, let's just say he's in one of his moods. He doesn't want to talk and he's adamant about not talking which Mika is supposed to come out like is she supposed to is she supposed to be the Mika that y'all said she needed to be at the wedding where she's supposed to push him into communicating and expressing himself or she's supposed to be the Mika that y'all saying now don't push him because you're not going to get a good response he's going to shut down I just I just thought that that was very contradicting you know, like, okay, what are we doing? Which one is she supposed to be? How is she supposed to handle him when he's in that state? So anyway, Misha, Mika was saying, um, you know, okay, you know, she's doing her um, confessional and she's like, all right, you know, she don't know how that's going to work because she can push people at times and I don't know what she meant by that I don't know if she means like I'm just not well we saw later on but she was saying how you know she don't know how that's gonna be because that's what she tends to do she'll push people another thing that um Mike's mom said and it could be nothing it could be just you know the words that she used but y'all know me. <laughs> so when she said um, something about him having a hard exterior, but he's soft on the inside. And not only does he want to be loved, but he needs to be loved. And it's the way she said it. It's the look on her face. It's the emphasis she put on the word need. Like I said, it could be totally nothing and just you know a chosen word but when you say someone needs something 
my question is, what are the consequences or what are the reactions if it's not received? Like to me, there's a difference between wanting, desiring, hoping, wishing versus needing. You know what I mean? Like when you need something and you don't get it, there's usually a consequence or a, a there's a cause and effect when it comes to that. And like I said, you know, her saying that just kind of, it just kind of had me raising my eyebrow a little bit. Um, because you have people who they're needy. We've all seen, heard, or been around needy people. And when you have people who are very, very needy, when they don't get what they want, there's usually a meltdown. Okay. You know, um, is usually, you know, arguments or just some type of negative reaction. Um, so yeah, that just had me raising my eyebrow a little bit because I'm like, where does he fall into that? Like on what, on, on that spectrum, where does he, where does he fall? So anyway, Mike meets with Mika's family and, um, of course, you know, he's asked, about his experience with his past relationships and they asked him like have you ever cheated before so he says he has you know he's um cheated emotionally before so mika's mom in her confessional was saying you know hearing him say that um is really concerning now I, okay I hear that, I understand, but at the same time, I mean, to think that a man from his teens to adulthood has never cheated, whether it's physically or emotionally, to me, it's kind of a bit unrealistic. I mean, it, it, it happens quite often, <laughs> more times than not. I... Depending on what it is, I mean, everyone has a past. You have people who may have cheated, you know, in their 20s. They get married in their 30s, and they are the epitome of the ideal spouse. You know what I mean? So just because you cheated when you were younger doesn't necessarily mean you're going to cheat now. So I don't hold people to that. I never have. You know, even when I was, before I got married, um, I've never, I don't know. You know, because the, the question always comes up, like, oh, have you ever cheated on somebody before? And, you know, I've had guys be like, yeah, I did, you know, it was whatever. I never felt like, oh, oh, my God, that means he's going to cheat on me. That's just how I think. I don't think that just because you did something before, again, depending on what it is, like, I'm not going to think you, you, here's the thing. So, for example, if you've been violent with women before, so let's say you, you know, I asked you, have you ever hit you know a girlfriend before and you tell me yeah that's a red flag I, i'm not gonna to me that's extreme so i'm not gonna think like oh that was then he's not gonna do it now no sir <laughs> no sir that is different that's different so anyway um when she was saying you know she was concerned about that i was kind of like eh, okay i get it first of all <laughs> i mean I, I guess men, men, anybody can cheat emotionally. I'm thinking if it was just emotionally, it was because whoever you were cheating emotionally with wasn't trying to get physical with you because had they were, I'm pretty sure you would have went along with it. But anyway, moving on from that. Um, anyway, so the mom told him about her expectations and, you know, how she wants him to treat her daughter, you know, and, um, they just and they all agreed and they all welcomed him to the family. Like that was a very, very short meeting. Now, moving on to the honeymoon. <laughs> all right. So the couples received a gift basket. They learn about, you know, the honeymoon trip, the destination. They're going to Panama. Everyone's excited. You know, they start packing and um just going down the couples, you know, Mika and my were talking about their dislike, well, his dislikes of heights and, and, um, you know, how she loves zip lining. He's not feeling it, but he will get on a roller coaster and, and, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll wait for you on the ground. Like I'm not, 
I'm not ziplining. And I feel, I get what he's saying. Like, I'll get on the roller coaster, but I'm not ziplining either. You know, so they they joked about that. Um, Derek and Katie talked about how, you know, they were laughing. Like, here we are married and don't even have each other's phone numbers. Zach and Mindy were comparing the size of their luggage. Um, Jessica and Austin, what, this being who they are, you know, laughing and joking and, 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 you know, talking. Then we have Brandon, Brandon and Taylor. So Brandon says, you know, he can't wait to spend more time with her on the, you know, he's excited about going on honeymoon. So, and like I said, they're packing. So he pulls out what appears to be some type of crotchless cowboy lingerie for men. Now, I know there is lingerie for men that they it usually has like some type of peephole, okay? And y'all know what that is for. It's in it's in the front, all right? So when he pulled his the uh the lingerie out, do they call it men lingerie? I I'm thinking do they? Or is it, I don't know. Anyway, it's men lingerie. So when he pulls his out, it's crotchless. Like from the front to the back. It's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, women, you know, I've seen when women have, you know, like the, the, the lingerie and it's either completely crotchless or there's an opening from the front to the back for easy access, <laughs> okay? Now, men lingerie, like I said, when it's, when it's, men lingerie usually does not have the front and the back out, okay? I mean, yeah. I, okay, I, I'm, I'm just going to digress with that. I'm just going to digress with that. I'll just say the lingerie that Brandon had is not the typical heterosexual male's lingerie. And I'm going to leave it at that. All right. So Taylor's shocked. She's laughing and she says, I like your panties. Now that's what I heard. If y'all if y'all didn't hear the same thing, please leave me a comment below because that's what I heard. Brandon says thank you without skipping a beat. Like it didn't even to me. If a woman says to a man, "I like your panties," usually a man is going to react to that and be like, "What, girl? These ain't no panties." Like what? You know what I'm saying? I mean, even if it's even if he knows she's joking, he's going to joke back with some type of response Brandon was just like thank you <laughs> like <laughs> oh my gosh okay moving on all the couples are on the plane you know everybody's doing a little camera time and whatever so um they get to oh so they're sticking with the whole all the couples honeymooning together which i like i actually like it. i think if i'm not mistaken and correct me if i'm wrong i think last season was the first time they actually had them honeymooning together the season before that they had them doing a couple's retreat they had them if i'm not mistaken correct me if i'm wrong guys but they had them doing a couple's retreat together in, in some cabin and then last season is when they had them actually interacting um with each other on honeymoon and not only that but had them living in the same building and so we're seeing with this season they have them honeymooning together so i'm only going to assume that they're going to have them living in the same um building as well which i'm totally fine with i think is a good idea because you know they can kind of Go through this process together. But um, anyway, so they arrive at the um, the hotel. Everyone's, you know, they get in their cars, they're checking in. And 
Yeah, so everyone's smiling, talking, walking with, either walking with or walking close to um, their spouse. And then you see Mika. So Mika, okay, when they're all together in a group walking, Mika is kind of in the front. Okay, and then you have Mike who's in the back by himself. Like he's literally the last person in the group walking and he's by himself. And so obviously, you know, everyone's kind of sensing the tension because in the confessionals, I believe it was Derek saying something and Mindy um, mentioned how you can tell something was that between Mike and Mika. Okay, so, but Mika, to me, is playing it off. Like, you, uh, other than her not walking side by side with him, her laughing and talking and interacting with everyone else, you would not know she was pissed off. You would not know she was pissed off. So, um, when they get in the elevator, I mean, and, oh, and then, Mike, he has on his shades, he has on his headset. It's very obvious he's disconnected from everything right now so it was and it was even clearer when they get on the elevator so they all crowd in on the elevator and um i believe somebody was like oh it's katie's birthday or something anyway they all raised their glasses and and you know was cheering and mike was just right there so the elevator door couldn't close and when Mindy and um, Derek kind of like turned him around like so Mindy grabbed his backpack and then Derek actually physically turned Mike to the side so that the elevator door can close child I just knew I was like Mike about to go off because his body language his face everything just said get off of me like he was hot so he's Brandon, I mean, Derek turns him and he's facing Mika at this point. So all this time, Mika is laughing like, like nothing is wrong. So when he turns and he's facing her, he is his just, and we're talking about from the side profile, he is looking so pissed. And she kind of glanced at him a little bit. Like at that moment, you knew. Okay, you knew she went, she went feeling it, but like it was almost like, don't start nothing in this elevator. <laughs> so anyway, um, they get to their room, and it's so funny because the show, you know, the background music that the show played, it was something like out of a horror movie. Y'all know when it's about to be the killing scene, and the bad guy or the monster or whoever is about to come and kill somebody you know how that's that y'all know how that that music is but that's, that's what they were playing and then it all begins okay so mika in her confessional she's saying how um she's very upset she reveals that uh, apparently they had a conversation on the plane and it was then that mike basically gave her an ultimatum that if she does not have sex with him on the honeymoon he's not going to want to be in the marriage now of course that would upset anybody all right so she was saying how on camera you know he's, he's a totally different person on camera than he is off camera and yeah like she's about to, she's ready to put him on blast so on camera she's like you know he's saying how he's he he's patient he'll wait it's up to her he gonna follow her lead he gonna let her take the lead and that's that but then when the cameras are off he's totally different he's like look it's either going <laughs> it's either going down during this honeymoon or i'm out so they sit down to discuss it and she's expressing you know her concerns about how um basically she feel like he's faking for the cameras Okay, so um, she was saying to him, you know, look, you told my family that you were in no rush. It was all up to me. You know, it's almost like you were just blowing smoke. Like you were just trying to tell them whatever to impress them. But now you're telling me the total opposite. 
um, she was saying that it was hard for her to be vulnerable and give, you know, give her all because she doesn't know who the right, you know, who the, I guess the real Mike is like, how can I be open and honest and, and give myself to you when you're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Okay. So the whole time she's talking, he's just sitting there like he's sitting there, but it's like, he's looking right through her. You know what I mean? I can't explain it. It's, it's, it's like, he's sitting there like he's listening. But to me, it's like the whole time he was just trying to come up with, an excuse you know what i mean like all right, i hear what you're saying but right now i'm just trying to come up with something because i know i'm wrong and so he finally responds and he's saying how um you know he was truthful and everything um with the because miko was saying you know she feels like pretty much like you lied on your application you're you they matched us based off of um, the information that we put on the applications and so she feels like they matched me based off of with you based off of what you put on there but obviously it's a lie and so she feels bamboozled you know like you're this is not who you really are so he was saying you know he was truthful he was truthful in the process you know with the experts with her family with the application like no this is who he really is he was he was being honest and um he pretty much was kind of making it seem like she crazy he was like like i don't know um like it wasn't my intention i didn't mean to hurt your feelings i didn't mean to make you feel you know uncomfortable and um you know he was saying that when he told her family that he wasn't in um a rush you know to consummate the marriage that he meant that it was real and he still feels that way you know that he didn't want to rush into anything and so to me it just kind of came off like he just given a blank a blanket statement to cover all the points every point she was making is like let me say something so that it's gonna cover and answer any question she had, any point she's making, is going to cover it. But anyway, Mika wasn't having it. <laughs> she, you know, like I said, he he just, I don't think he was hearing her. I don't think he was, because I'm pretty sure, because when they were on the plane and he, and he made the comment, they had a conversation. So he already knew how she felt. He knew her point, you know, the points she was making. So, yeah, I bet you from the plane on the way to the hotel at the hotel the whole time he's thinking about how can i cover my ass okay but mika wasn't buying it so she's like all right so now you're saying that um because he was saying talking about how you know he just want to be um better than he was the day before he just trying to figure out how to be a better husband and how to love her and you know on and on and on so then she's like oh okay so now you saying you want to be a better husband and you're trying to do this you're trying to do that but off camera that's not what you're saying and she was like that's my you're proving my point that you're two different people so as she was calling him out you know on his bs you can see that he was shutting down at that point because she wasn't falling for it you know like damn okay she it, it didn't work you know now i got to come up with something else and so she goes into um you know she was just grilling him she was like look i'm not feeling this you know and so then he goes into what i call the victim mode and you know he's talking about he's learning how to talk to her and understand you know how to communicate with her um like this is all new for him and I'm just figuring things out and um I shouldn't be what do you say he didn't feel like he should be made to feel bad because um you know he's not able to understand the best way to handle a situation with someone he doesn't know Mike sit down 
just have several seats because uh when he was saying all of that i'm like dude first of all you're talking in circles you know it's clear as day that you said this to this woman and now to spin it and try to make it seem like this is all new for me i don't know you're a grown-ass man now i mean everybody doesn't communicate on the same level but this is not the first time i'm assuming that you've been with a woman so to act like you don't know how to communicate like what then you have no business being on this show trying to find a wife you need to start from scratch and just have friends female friends so that you know how to talk to them and then move into having a girlfriend you're not ready for marriage if you can't communicate to someone as far as when to be intimate like it's not difficult you were able to tell her family and her family and friends that you wasn't ready, that you wasn't in a rush, you was leaving it up to her. So are you saying that you didn't know how to repeat those same words to your wife? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's the case, you need help. <laughs> you need help. So anyway, um, he says all of that and she's still not buying it she's still not buying it um so she's saying to him you know it's natural as a spouse you want to have sex it's it's, it's natural she was like but you know it's natural you want to have sex with me it's natural for me to want to have sex with you but i'm not coming at you like if it don't happen on the honeymoon i'm out you know that was her whole point it wasn't it wasn't the fact that he wanted to have sex okay she's like of course you do you know it's that's a natural feeling it's a natural want process whatever i want it to basically like or, or it's natural for me to want it too her problem is the fact that you're putting a timeline you're giving you're you're, you're basically demanding sex from her or else so he's clearly getting frustrated because she's not letting up like she's steady coming at him and i guess this is what she meant back when she was with his family and um when she was on her confessional when they were saying you know he doesn't respond well to somebody pushing him and i guess when she was saying that she usually is the type to push someone i guess this is what she mean and also after meeting with the families um all the couples had their moment you know to talk about the meeting with the in-laws and when mika told him what his family said you know as far as pushing him and you know him shutting down or whatever and she, and it brings me to this because this connects the dots it, it it goes hand in hand when she says you know so my concern is you know when you get to that point where you shut down she was like my concern is that it causes further problems like i just want you to be able to push yourself through it and open up let's have a discussion end it on a good note and move on and you know he was saying how um that's what he plans to do you know he won't shut down and you know he will work things out he will talk it over her doing the total opposite that he's doing now I just thought it was funny because it made me think back to, okay, they had a conversation about what happens when they get in an argument and he shuts down. And, you know, now they're having that moment, <laughs> literally like what, a day, two days later, and he's shutting down. So it's like when, when he, when you're not buying what he's selling, then he shuts down. Conversation over. I already said what I had to say and I'm over it. So anyway um so she was saying you know you you know you giving me this time frame and he's like no i didn't give a time frame and she's like yeah you did and the time frame was the honeymoon and he still he comes back with um well you know we have seven weeks to make this marriage work so i guess she just got tired of the back and forth and she just came right out and asked him okay so are you saying that you did not say to me on the plane that if i do not have sex with you on the honeymoon 
you are out. You do not want to continue with this marriage. And he flat out looked at her and said, no. Yeah, I thought she was going to jump out her skin. She was like, uh, she started doing, <laughs> she was like, are you serious? You did say that. Are you telling me? She's like, can you just admit that you said it? She said, you said, she said, when I put you on blast about it, you were like, well, that's, yeah, I said it, but that's not what I meant. And I think, and, and I think, you know, she would have been okay with that. Like, look, I, I did say it, but this is, this is what I meant by it. You know, I'll work on my communication. No, he, he was flat out denying that he said it at all. And that was what I think was really pissing her off about the whole situation. So she was like, see, that's what I'm talking about. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like you're, you're, you're lying. She was like, this is not my opinion. These are facts. You in fact did say that to me. So at this point, he's like shutting down. He rubbing his head. He's rubbing his face. You know, he's, I guess in his mind, it's like, look, she ain't letting up. And I guess now he's so far into the lie that he can't even turn around and say, all right, you know what? I did say, it, but I didn't mean it. It's like, now you're, you're too far past that. So you either have to shut it down or continue with the lie. So at this point, he's like, all right, you know, right now, neither one of us want this honeymoon to start off like this. So I feel like, um, you know, it's best that I just give you your space for the night. I'll just get another room and we could talk about this in the morning. You know, and so she agreed and, you know, he tells her to have a good night and he leaves. So anyway, Derek and Katie in the room, go to bed. Nothing really, nothing really, um, much happening. You know, she, other than her saying, I mean, they're obviously sexually attracted to each other. That's what they're saying. They're doing a lot of heavy flirting. And she basically was like, I'm just hoping for some birthday sex. Jessica and Austin, being their usual selves, nothing more, nothing less. I will say that her uncontrollable giggling is really annoying. Like, it, it's it's too much. And you can kind of tell it's wearing on him, too, because when they were in the bed and it was like, okay, let's go to sleep, she starts giggling. You know, and he kind of, you could tell his eyes were so heavy. So he kind of looks over, you know, he laughs with her, and she's like, okay, okay, you know, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to sleep for real now. Like, you know, good night. She starts laughing again. And no, when she said, you know, it's good night. And he was like, so no more laughing. That, that right there told me it was getting on his nerves. And she's like, no, no more laughing for real. I'm going to go to sleep. And the camera zooming to him. And I swear one of his eyes would not close. It was like, it looked so weird. But he was clearly tired. And she kept laughing. And I'm like, yeah, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to really get on his nerves. Um, Brandon and, and Taylor, nothing, nothing much was going on. Um, you know, he was doing his confessional, talking about how he treats his women. It's all about them. All he cares about is how his, his, whoever he's with in relationship, how they feel and all of that. And in the bed, they kiss goodnight. That's it. Zach and Mindy. So they're in the room talking about the other couples. Mindy mentions how everyone seems to be, you know, at different points as far as like, I guess the interactions, you know, like they all got married at the same time, but everyone's interaction seems different. And so Zach says something like, you know, he's not trying to be like everybody else. You know, they have to go with, um, you know, at their own pace. And so he walks off, he walks towards the sink area and she follows behind him. Like she's still talking. So he, <laughs> He turns to her and he was like, you know, not to make this totally awkward, but are you going to keep talking to me while I'm washing my face? And I, y'all, <laughs> I was like, okay, here we go. You know, because she at the time was kind of dropping hints. She wasn't being direct. She was kind of dropping hints like, oh, like we all started the journey together, but you can see certain couples seem to have a better connection than others. And so anyway, when he says the whole, you know, you're going to keep talking, 
she kind of had this look on her face, you know, and um, she says that she had high hopes, you know, coming into this experiment. And, you know, he basically he was repeating himself like, look, I'm not trying to compete with anybody else. We can't base what we got going on on what other couples are doing or what how it seemed to appear with other couples. And um, in her confessional, she was talking about how she noticed how some of the other husbands, you know, treat their wives, like show them affection in some type of way, not necessarily, you know, hugging and kissing and all of that, but just subtle things that some of the husbands were doing. She just noticed it. And she told Zach, she said, you know, it just makes me feel, you know, it kind of brings her confidence down. You know what I mean? It affects her confidence. And I guess she's saying in terms of like, here the guys are showing their wives affection, affection, meaning obviously they're attracted to them, and and I guess she's confused because when they're just when they're together, just the two of them. You, I mean, we saw him kissing all over her face when she was asleep. We saw the honeymoon night when he laid her on the bed and he was kissing her. So I guess to her it's like, okay, when we're in the room, you cuss, you know, you touchy feely kissing me, and then when we're around everybody else, it's like we're buddies. You know, kind of, I guess the same thing with Mike. You're one way on camera. You're a different way, you know, when you're around other people in Zach's case. Um, so he basically was like, you know, he's not going to allow what's going on with other people to force him to, you know, have expressed, you know, PDA. So maybe that's just not his thing. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, basically he was like, we going, we're going to go with our flow and we're not worrying about nobody else. And she, at that point, she agreed and he called, so he calmed her down and changed the subject and was like, you know, he's glad that they're there and she agreed. So now this is where I think things really took a shift. Okay. I mean, first of all, him saying, are you really going to keep talking to me while I'm washing my face? That right there let me know he was irritated. And now, you know, he kind of shut things down. Like, all right, I'm done with talking. Let's go to bed. So they get ready to go to bed. And Mindy says she's too tired to take a shower. She's going to shower in the morning. And he says something. I couldn't make out what he was saying. But... She was like, you know, I hope you don't think this is gross. And so he's like frowning his face like, uh, yes, it is gross. It's nasty. And she's like, um, well, you know, like you're just going to have to get used to this because, you know, sleep comes before showering to me. Like I, I need to get my sleep. <laughs> so they get in the bed. You can tell he was not thrilled about that. And. You can tell by his upkeep, how he how he is with his body and, and his hair. and all. You can just tell what type of person he is. So why you think getting in the bed with him and you have, get in the bed with anybody and you have not showered. Like, so just think, you had all, you, all day in these clothes. You've been on this long flight, sweating, all kind of stuff. All day. And you are going to get in the bed without showering. That would be a problem for me. Okay. So next thing you know. Okay. So they, they get in the bed. Next thing you know. Mindy is up in the middle of the night. <laughs> walking the halls. And she's upset. If, I kid you not. The first thing that came to my mind was. If you had time. If you had the energy to get up. And walk around the hotel. You could have got your ass in the shower. That that, that was the first Thing that came to my mind when I saw her walking the halls and she was talking to my house, she was upset. You oh, you were so tired. So apparently they had a conversation. I'm pretty sure one of them one of them started a conversation. Okay, that led to her leaving out the hotel room. That she was so tired that she couldn't shower, but she wanted to go to bed. But obviously she did not go to sleep. So she revealed that Zach told her. He was not building an attraction towards her. And what did she want him to do about it? So she's saying, you know, well, then I guess this isn't going to work. Like if you are not attracted to me, you're not building an attraction towards me. 
like basically how can this work and she said that he responded with that's not the response he was hoping for i don't know what all of that meant i don't know um it kind of sound like a mind game to me i don't know if i said this in my last review and and what i try to avoid is comparing couples to couples of last season or seasons past um i try to avoid that but it's there it's like it's so many similarities like i don't know if i said this in my last review that zach and mindy reminds me of luke was it kate i don't know if her name was kate luke and kate from last season where uh was season before where she didn't she didn't at the time i didn't even know about the showering i just said that they reminded me of them because zach can kind of come off you know i zach doesn't uh, luke obviously seemed very feminine to me or like he was just frustrated with himself because he didn't he wasn't standing in his truth zach seem now it seems like he's there for alternative motives and so he's just going with the flow but that he's not really attracted to her obviously not he he just revealed that um but he will be affectionate towards her and she seemed very very clingy now it's even more similarities because Kate at the time did not like showering at night either she wanted to shower in the morning and Luke had a problem with that so I just find it really funny how these people are just like previous couples to this extreme so anyway um so she so and Luke eventually started playing mind games with Kate and that's what I'm getting Zach is going to be doing with mindy because that whole little that's not the response that i was hoping for like dude well what how am i supposed to respond you just told me first of all i would be confused as hell because you've been kissing on me hugging on me giving me affection you know pouring coffee for me in 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 a towel and i didn't even say anything to you about it like i didn't point it out you were the one that made mention of you know what, what do you think about me you know pouring coffee and nothing but a towel so you're obviously flirting with me i would think that there was an attraction now all of a sudden you're saying you're not now i don't know if it's based off of the fact that you know because you you can be attracted physically attracted to someone and hygiene would completely turn you off i know it would for me so i don't know if he's saying if if her not showering pissed him off to the point where he made him say that i don't know but anyway so she's talking to the camera and she's like you know i don't know how to feel right now um other than who the f is this guy like who did i marry you know was this a bad idea so <laughs> that was it you know, please leave your comments below let me know what you guys think about everything so this episode was kind of juicy so i need to know what y'all thought about mika and mike situation and mainly mika and mike and zach and mindy because those were really really only the 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 two relationships that um had some stuff going on and please leave a comment below am i reaching regarding brandon and his little men lingerie his little i don't even know what you, bikinis i don't know what they were but they were crotchless what do y'all think about that is that normal for a straight man to have why would he need the back of his bikini man lingerie why would he need access for that or <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry whatever if you want to comment on that please do so so that i know that i'm not alone in this all right guys until next time take care